Let's go! This Josh Heupel 2021 recruiting class is historic. Let's go, baby. Have a day. Let's go. And at the end of today's video, I'm going to tell you one thing that really makes this group stand out, where you can even call it legendary. Yes, that might sound like hyperbole, but we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. And in the background, you see Tion Evans, a really good running back that transferred to Louisville after only one year at Tennessee. But it's really the other two players at the bottom of this on three composite that stood out. Dejon Terry gave Tennessee two really good seasons as a rotational defensive lineman to go to Oklahoma. Uh, his final year, he was Still a good player, but he gave you two years of solid play. And Kamal Haddon, what else can you really say about him? Rattler, high and intercepted! Pick six, Tennessee's Kamal Haddon! Three really, really good seasons as a corner in the SEC. And just a do-it-all defensive back. What a player. Obviously, he got selected by the Kansas City Chiefs and will probably have a relatively good NFL career. They came to see us work, man. Yeah. We done put the work in all summer, all spring, all camp. We ready, man. Hendon epitomizes toughness, grit, leadership, winning traits. The guy works endlessly every single day at his craft, almost being like a full-time coach as far as the amount of time that he spends in our offices. And at the same time, when he's with his teammates, driving them to be their absolute best and to climb every single day for our program to be its best. Let's go! Let's go! Work day! Work day! Bring the juice! Tennessee also brought in another quarterback in Joe Milton, who initially actually beat Hendon Hooker out. And, of course, Hooker eventually took the job and never looked back. But this past season and Milton's only full year as a starter, he was – Okay, obviously had its ups and its downs, but he was good enough to get drafted by the New England Patriots and overall was a positive influence on the Tennessee program. Ah! Let's go! Caleb Tremblay played his final year of eligibility at Tennessee coming in from USC, and he was, you know, a reliable, decent mop-up time backup. And then you also had Brandon Turnage, who was an elite four-star recruit who initially started his career at Alabama. He transferred then to Tennessee, where he played three seasons and was essentially benched uh, this past year. His only INT was on a ball that was thrown literally right at him. So we'll see how he does in his final year at Ole Miss. So he transfers. He's a super senior with a final year of eligibility as a part of the 2019 class. And this has actually been his biggest career highlight winning a spring game dunk contest. Hey, you had some nasty hops there, Brandon. I like to see it. Huh? 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 So now we get to offensive tackle Jeremiah Crawford. Now, I know the PFF grades for him aren't all that great, and in our film studies, we pointed out quite a few mistakes, but for a couple of seasons, he was a good swing offensive tackle, could play right, could play left, and we'll never forget this vomit versus Alabama in route to victory. So, even though he's probably closer to a C, I'm giving him a B. So the next three players were actually all high school recruits, starting off here with Isaac Washington. He's done nothing at any of his stops. He left Tennessee pretty quickly. Anderson Kobe caught one pass at Tennessee for five yards, and that catch came against Tennessee Tech. He has since transferred to Indiana and done very little after a really good first year with the Hoosiers. Now, this last one, Amari McNeil has actually turned into a decent defensive lineman on a bad defense in Colorado. He did rack up some statistics and has a very promising future. So for me to grade it, we'll go D, B, and an F for Washington. So Trinity Bell and Miles Campbell were three-star tight ends. Bell left quickly and went the JUCO route. And Campbell, he tried to make it work, was mostly a special teamer, transferred to North Carolina Central. I, I didn't even know that was a school. Uh, but he did catch two passes for 34 yards this past year in a tutty. Los Angeles Rams select linebacker Tennessee. Agent Zero. So after five consecutive misses, we get to the best defensive player in this class, which was Byron freaking Young. Obviously, learning under Aaron Donald last year was big for him, but he was just 
so freaking good as a rookie for the Rams and as a player for the Tennessee Volunteers. Not the highest rated recruit, but the dude just has a freaking engine. And look, some Tennessee on Tennessee violence right here, knocking out uh, Josh Dobbs here. The guy is just an amazing, amazing football player. So Deshaun Rucker's a three-star DB with elite speed, and at Tennessee over three seasons, he barely did anything at all. Faced some convenient injuries to stay at that four-game limit. We'll have two years left at UCF. Now we get to William Parker, an early enrollee from Nashville, now at UAB, and in his first year as a starter, played quite a bit and got a decent PFF grade. But for both of them at Tennessee, we'll have to grade them a Dolly Parton. Julian Nixon and Walker Merrill, two very interesting pass catchers. Nixon left pretty quickly and went the JUCO route. Butler Community College and now is at ULM. I don't think he's recorded a Division One Power 5 statistic yet. And in the background, I believe this is Walker Merrill's only career touchdown after two seasons at Tennessee where he barely did anything at all. Uh, gets a blowout TD here. He transfers to Wake Forest, played in six games, and had a grand total of zero catches. So very interesting career paths for both of them. Now we've reached... The four-star portion of this video, and as you guys know, the blue chip recruits, you have to hit on them to have big-time SEC success, right? Well, we'll talk about that here in just a second. I want to shout out our friends at NoOffSeason.com. Jalen Wright in the background is actually the next player we are going to discuss, but what we do at NoOffSeason.com is help build your sports card portfolio. I actually am a believer in Jalen Wright in the NFL level. But if you think Hinton Hooker or you think even Joe Milton could play, backup quarterbacks are oftentimes some of the best buys you can make. Jalen Wright, elite speed. He's going to be a great player, I believe, for the Dolphins. And just so much production. Three consecutive years of consistent football. And look, if you play at Tennessee... You got to share carries with Jabari Small. You have to share carries with Dylan Sampson. And a player we discussed earlier, the Louisville transfer, he left because Jalen Wright was so freaking good. So we now get to Christian Charles and Cayman Marley. We'll start off with Marley. This was just a disaster. I just don't even know what happened. I know he had a little bit of an injury his first year at Tennessee, and then they were thinking about moving him to linebacker, and then eventually he left the program, and I don't think has recorded a st uh, statistic or really been anywhere since then. Now, Christian Charles is a very, very interesting defensive back who was mostly a special teams backup type of contributor his first couple of years, played a little bit of defense, and then this past year suffered an injury and never really could get his footing. He is still on the roster, and in the background, you see the biggest play of his career, and it was a big one recovering a fluky fumble here to help extend this Tennessee lead versus Alabama, which led to the defining win of the Josh Heupel tenure. Now we get to the top two players of the class. And before I tell you who they are, can you name them? Because what's really fascinating is both of them were colossal bust for the Vols. We'll talk about them in just a second, but I want to give you an overview of my thoughts on why I believe this class is legendary. Now, I will also tell you that, yes, in 2021, when the head coach takes over, it is, in theory, his recruiting class, but Jeremy Pruitt also deserves some credit for the recruits here because, well, your first full recruiting class isn't until year two. Anyone that follows college football will tell you that based on how uh, the cycle actually works. So Pruitt deserves some credit, but the bottom line is what Jeremy Pruitt did with this crop is just stupid, okay? 15 of the 23 players played snaps. It doesn't look like and sound like a whole lot, but if you watched my Arkansas video from the day before, you see how many recruits can come in and just do absolutely nothing for your crop. And eight of them were B-plus or better players, 34.9%. That is a little low, if you ask me. Um, if you want to make turnage a B, you can go on ahead and do that. But for the most part, the A's are what truly stick out. Hinton Hooker, 
at the quarterback position, being an, an A is just a true needle mover. A pass rusher and Byron Young being an A and Jalen Wright, all the success he had. This class really, really was special. And this is what really stands out for me. And it shows you what type of coach Jeremy Pruitt actually is. They could set an NFL record here with three different quarterbacks being drafted from the same recruiting class, which I would like to believe would be the first time that that's ever happened. Maybe Alabama or somewhere else. I I know there's been a lot of two QB classes, obviously Mac Jones and and Jalen Hurts, but that's not here nor there. Now, you're probably wondering, wait, we've only talked about two QBs. We talked about Joe Milton and, of course, Hinton Hooker. Well, the second highest rated player in this class is actually a QB, and his name is Caden Salter. Obviously, he transferred to Liberty. Obviously, his Tennessee career was a disaster with a bunch of off-the-field incidents that ended it before it even began. And it was probably better for all parties involved for him to move on to Liberty, where he is a very intriguing NFL draft prospect. Does he get drafted next year? I would like to think that he does because his tools are absolutely unreal. And the final highest-rated player in this class was Aaron Willis, who did absolutely nothing as a four-star linebacker out of Virginia. But once again, for this class to be as productive as it was and the highest-rated player was a national 268 four-star, that is truly, truly spectacular. Now, a lot of it has changed with the, with the transfer portal and all of that. But, man, I, I tell Tennessee fans all the time, and I know I've had a lot of success with Tennessee videos. I'll call a spade a spade when I see it. Jeremy Prude is a very special football coach. And I know with Tennessee and Oklahoma joining, it's going to change some things. But, man, he is so freaking good. Now, will Nico be a Hendon Hooker type of player? We'll see. A video is floating in your face. My thoughts on Nico in the spring game. Check it out. It is power hour. SEC. Boom. And tonight, oh, we're doing slamming salmon, baby. Let's freaking go. Huh? Huh? Ah. Uh.